New Jersey Governor Chris Christie delivered a strong apology for the Bridgegate saga today. He took full responsibility, fired his senior staff who lied to him. But did he do enough to restore his credibility and national image? And just how is the scandal going to resonate across the country? For that, let's check in with two nationally syndicated radio hosts, Mark Levine, Lars Larson. Gentlemen, thank you very much. What would you hear today, you Lars? What would you hear today, especially from your callers? I'm hearing from a lot of people that they don't necessarily believe that Governor Christie wasn't involved, but I frankly think he wasn't. He sat down with his staff a month ago, gave them the uh, come to Jesus speech and said, tell me the truth. They didn't. He fired two of them today. And uh, so I think that he's probably done what you'd expect an executive to do. Frankly, I'd be more concerned about his position on guns and illegals than this craziness by his outlaw staff members jamming up the world's most traveled bridge. Yeah. No, OK. Well, we can get to that in a minute. Mark Levine, I want to get your same take. What did you hear now you're on the liberal side and I presume your callers are on the liberal side what did you hear them talking about when they talked Christie well, it's interesting because I do have some conservative callers, too, and to a one, everyone was talking against Governor Christie. The liberals say, look, this is the culture of corruption. This is the kind of cronyism we see in New Jersey where there's political payback. You reward your friends and you punish your enemies any way you can. But what's interesting to me is Rush Limbaugh condemned Chris Christie. Senator Graham came out and said, if my staff did this, they would know I was opposed to it. What and did let's Rush remember, say? this isn't just one what, or what two. Did, what did Rush say? I, I didn't listen today. What did Rush say? Rush, Rush said that this is typical for Christie. This is the kind of thing that he does. I mean, he was an attack on Christie. I don't remember the exact quote. You know, Lars, Larry, okay, <laughs> Rush may, may be right or may, may not be right, but we had a segment, we had a good segment earlier in the show. I mean, the, the whole thing kind of hinges around this one hour, you called it a come to Jesus meeting. He had a one hour yeah. meeting with his senior staff, and he asked them if they had done anything regarding Bridgegate or any of those kinds of games, and they said right. no. And so then yep. he left it until he discovered the emails last night or two, two nights ago where he immediately made firing. Now, if it turns out, maybe this is the if of the year for Christie or the next two years, if it turns out that that one-hour meeting story is true and correct and nobody fessed up, then I think Christie's a huge winner here because he took immediate yep. action to fire, you know, the bad apples on his staff. Well, I Larry, I agree with you because one of the things I think he got a chance to do on the national stage today, since the whole country's watching it, is act like an, uh, the way an executive should. Take decisive action, fire the people responsible, which doesn't happen often enough at the White House or at all, depending on your point of view. And he did just that. So I, I think he did get a chance to, you know, to act presidential, if you will. And I think that's what he's suggesting. Now, could people have said, well, he should have done what the Bergen record did and actually tell his chief of staff or his ID? director go take a look at all the emails of my staff members mm -hmm. and see, see if any of them are mentioning traffic or Fort Lee that's all the newspaper reporters did and yet we don't get that kind of oversight within government agencies so that's a fair uh, criticism of his response to it but I guess if you tied up your office doing nothing but internal investigations uh, oh, you could probably on. get every government bureaucracy he, tied he up that way. He stonewalled for months for months he made a joke of it remember how they got these documents to begin with they investigated the New Jersey people did and the the administration refused the Christie administration refused to give them any documents they subpoenaed them they held them in contempt they went to court to stop it and the New Jersey court said turn it over it's positively Nixonian they got the documents only through the use of the courts and now finally they have the documents finally Chris well, the Christie way, reads are, them I'd and it, remember it's not just on one or two people there's like five or six or ten no, but or twenty people involved Mark, there's a lot of people involved you're right Mark but that wasn't Christie's doing that was the no, court. It authority. wasn't. That was the no. That was not Christie. And the doing. real. You're, no you're, tell, you're telling me Christie didn't tell his the, people to turn over the documents. No, no, the guy, the guys who turned over the documents were the two yep. Port Authority appointees. And right. when they That's go to right. the Port Authority, uh, Christie has no power Why over Why didn't Governor Christie order them to turn over the documents? Why didn't he say, get he, to the bottom? He can't. Oh, I'll fire you. No, but Why he, didn't he say that he two months can't. ago? He yeah, they to have to follow state law, Mark. That's right. You stop yapping and, and just way, listen to me. Now, the other thing he can do, it's not opposed he can to state do law. this. So, he can do this, Lars. He can order everyone in the executive branch in Trenton to turn over emails and text messages. That yeah. he can do, and I, I asked this question in our earlier segment, and I will ask you, should he not do that and make every effort to supply the assembly, the state assembly, with that evidence? Yes. 
Yes, he absolutely should do that. And I think the real test of whether or not he's telling the truth about this is going to be now that he's fired some people, somebody, if they know otherwise, that Governor Christie knew about this before he claims to have known about it yesterday morning from the Bergen record, is going to have to come forward and say, no, the governor knew about it or I have an email, something along those lines. If that proof is out there, then Christie is in real trouble and his presidential prospects dim. All right, but 20 seconds, Mark Levine. You, okay. you, you're going to, essentially, your point is this issue is far from settled. Is that what you're yes, saying? Yes, and it's larger than whether Christie knew about it ahead of time. He set up a culture of corruption. They would say, okay, time for travel problems in Fort Lee, and everyone just followed right. suit. Thank if there you, were a bunch gentlemen. of honest people there, it wouldn't happen. Mark Levine, Lars Larson, our two radio guys. I love radio, by the way.